Hello everybody, I have a love-hate relationship with the Mercedes Vito. I've owned them for the last 12 years, but there's three reasons why I buy Vitos instead of transporters, and why I think you should too. But there is also one big, huge reason why you should probably just not buy a Vito whatsoever. Look, come on, let's get into it. My name's Ben, and welcome to Dad Cars. So I bought my first Vito about 12 years ago. It was a 2002, so a first generation Mercedes Vito. And it was an eight seat minibus, still short wheelbase, but had eight seats in it. And then five years later, I bought this 2004 Vito. So it's a second generation one. And today is the first time I've driven this car in probably at least two months. The battery was completely flat. I charged it up overnight, slapped it in today, and boom, we're away. Right, just quickly then, before we get into the three reasons why I think a Vito is a better purchase than an equivalent transporter, let me tell you about this particular one that I'm driving here today. So, God, that doesn't look healthy, does it? Oh, God, don't breathe that. <laughs> God, right, so this has got oh, a 2.1 litre turbocharged diesel, which produces, I think, around 115 horsepower, and it weighs about two tonnes as well. As you may well have already seen, it's far from a well-kept example. This Vito I purchased about seven years ago, and it started its life with me as a converted camper van. The previous owner had converted it, put a roof vent on, insulated and carpeted the sides, put a rock and roll bed in the back, even had a TV. I mean, these pilot chairs at the front here as well, which actually are really wobbly <laughs> and not very good, but it was a lovely camper when I first got it. And I used it lots camping as well, took a family camping when I only had one child, went camping with my friends. But what I've also done several times over the last 10 years is moved house. And each time we've always bought a project house. So we had the Vito as a nice practical camper, but I also used it to go and pick up building materials or to do tip runs. Honestly, I could not tell you <laughs> the amount of tons of household waste I've taken to the tip in a Vito. <laughs> And unfortunately, over the years, that has obviously taken its toll on this once lovely Vito. Oh, look, as we go past the transporter, <laughs> let's get on to reason number one, price. No doubt if you've looked into buying either a Vito or transporter, you probably already noticed that there's a huge price difference. I mean, I had a very quick look this morning on Auto Trader, and it seems, you know, for an equivalent age, the mileage car, to this Vito, you know, you're looking at around 10,000 or more for an equivalent T5. And most of those transporters have about a million miles on them as well. But you could get yourself an equivalent Vito, I think, for about half the price. So if you were looking to get a brand new van, common sense would say get a transporter because they seem to hold their value better. But a second-hand purchase, if you can get an equivalent veto for half the price i mean surely that's a no-brainer i mean that's certainly why i have always gone for the veto over the equivalent transporter being short wheelbase these are a little over 4.7 meters long and about 1.9 meters wide or to put it another way about the same size if not slightly smaller than your average suv Yes, that's right. Most cars on the road now are van size, which is why it's so hard to park in a painted marked bay nowadays at supermarkets and things like that. But at least with a Vito, if you were using this with your family and you had one which had seats in the back, it's got sliding doors, hasn't it? Which I think goes to show that actually getting a van like this is a far better and more practical thing than buying a, say, a seven seat SUV. You know, particularly if you're using those seven seats, you'll have no boot in an SUV. But in this, you'll have a boot, you'll be able to get in and out because of the sliding doors, which is what I've been thinking for a long time now. When my four children get close to teenage years, I reckon we'll just get like an executive travel veto. You know, so you have the boot space, you'll be able to get in and out, the sliding doors really easily, and the proportions are probably smaller than an SUV. Now, reason number two is only a small point. Number three is a big one. But I like the Vito because they are rear-wheel drive. Well, you know, transporters, they are front-wheel drive or you can get four-wheel drive ones. But 
rear wheel drive in your van is actually really beneficial, particularly if you've got a load on. You know, I think these vans can take up to one ton. And you know, if you have got a lot of stuff on board or a lot of people on board, you know, if you've got one fully loaded with all the seats in the back, you know, having rear wheel drive is a big advantage. You know, these things weigh two tons. If you've got an extra ton in the back and then all the weights on those rear wheels, obviously it's just you know, basic. It makes sense to have, have rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive is also better for towing. I have towed a little fishing boat on a trailer in this van and it coped with it really well. Obviously, if you're planning on using your van without much weight in the back, then you know, front wheel drive would make much more sense because you know, all the weight of the engine is down on there. And you know, when, like now, when there's nothing in the back, you, know, you do actually feel the difference and you, you can actually break traction, but that might also be the fact that I've got budget tires on this van. But look, I've just always liked the idea of having a manual Mercedes with rear wheel drive. I've always thought that that's quite a cool thing. Now, before I talk about reason number three, I want to talk about the big reason why you might not want to buy a Vito full stop. And that's rust. Because as my good friend Colin, AKA the bearded explorer would say, Oh, she's a crispy one, this one. <laughs> this van is so rusty. Every single panel on this van, apart from the bumpers and the wings, because obviously they're plastic, are rusty. And some of them, I mean, the driver's door, oh my goodness. I mean, I'm probably gonna have to replace that very soon. Now, rust is an issue that plagues all Mercedes Vitos from the start all the way up to 2004. I can completely confirm that. This is a 2004 car. Now I've heard from people that in 2005, Mercedes sorted the problem, or I've also heard that it happened from 2007. So I'm not too sure. Apparently some say that it's down to Mercedes using non-galvanized steel before 2005, 2007. And some say that Mercedes were using salt water in their water-based paints when painting the early Vitos, but yeah rust is a huge problem with early vetoes now it's true that all old vans suffer from rust but as s club 7 once famously said there ain't no rusty van like a veto rusty van and for anybody watching outside of the uk i apologize you will not get that random 90s reference in fact the rust on my veto and even more so the one i had before this it's getting so bad if i don't do something about it soon i'll probably have to notify the dvla that this van has had a color change and it is now brown. I must admit, the reason it's got to the extent that it has is partly my fault as well. I honestly cannot tell you the last time I cleaned this van. It's probably been about four years. Maybe since I started having children, might even be that long. Oh, transporter. We've yet to see another Vito. Probably because they're all rusting somewhere. Cool, how does this corner? Let's have a look. You can throw this thing around, honestly, you can. While I'm roasting my van, I might as well point out some of the other sort of quirks that, that my particular van has got. So the handbrake lever snapped off a number of years ago. So me, being a very practical, resourceful person, I drilled a little hole in what was left of the plastic and then attached this electrical cable. Um, so yeah, that, that fixed that. My driver's side window is temperamental. 60% of the time, it works every time. Also, the gear stick is crumbling. Every single time I drive the car, little pieces of it come off in my hand. But hang on, I'm not doing a very good job of convincing you to buy a Vito, am I? Look, let me get back to point number three. Running costs and maintenance. Honestly, over the 12 years that I've owned Vitos, and look, as you can see, they've you know, hardly been babied as well. I've only been left stranded twice. One time it was because one of the fuel lines, the, the hose got detached. And once we figured out it was that, we just popped a clip on, reconnected it and boom, done. The other time I was left stranded was when I was driving my first Vito and I got pulled over by the police because it was so rusty. I don't, it's a shame, I don't think I'll have a picture to be able to show you how bad it was, but it was technically all compliant. You know, went through the MOT and everything, but he pulled me over. He said it looked so bad that he revoked my MOT. The problem was then, when I took it to an MOT test center, they said, look, because it's been taken away by the police, we're kind of just gonna have to throw the book at you here. And then they gave me this whopping great bill. 
Um, so it ended up on eBay and just sold off for spares and repairs. So that doesn't actually really count, does it? Because that wasn't a mechanical issue. So mechanically, the Vito is bulletproof. This engine is bulletproof. Operationally, it's bulletproof. Now, I admit that this is just anecdotal evidence, but honestly, I've had numerous friends over the years that have bought T5s, bought transporters, and their ownership experiences have been horrible. Just constant big bills, hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Every time I see them, how's the transporter going? Oh, I just had another 600 pound bill. Oh, that's my wobbling door card. Oh yeah, yeah, that doesn't look good. And also it seems with all the parts for a transporter, although it's just a Volkswagen, you know, they seem to be applying a transporter tax. Now, because the values of transporters are so high, all the parts seem to be priced really high as well, don't they? How annoying is that? So it is my honest opinion that two like-for-like -like transporter and a Vito, same year, same mileage, I reckon that the Vito would be more reliable and cheaper for you to maintain. If anyone watching this has experience of owning a T5, please hop into the comments below, correct me if I'm wrong, or let me know if what I'm saying is true. Does it cost a lot and are the parts expensive? Now I've actually been offered two transporters, both really nice, lovely camper van conversions from Dad Car subscribers to feature on the channel. And I hope to get one on soon, because I think that'd be fun. Maybe I'll take a couple of my children camping with me and make a video as well. So to summarize the Vito then, I still really rate them, despite the fact that I've had two that have literally rotted to pieces on me. I mean, in fairness, the underside of this Vito is actually pretty good. It's just the body panels, it's so bad. But I really highly recommend anyone out there who's thinking about getting a van, get yourself a Vito, go for one that's like a, a newer one than this, give it a really good looking over, make sure there's no rust. But I reckon you'd be able to nab yourself a bargain because you know, even like cars that are one or two years older than this might not suffer from the same rust, but they suffer from the same reputation, don't they? And I will be attending Auto Alex's Shed Fest on the 28th of August in Gaydon. And I will be bringing the ultimate shed. Surely this, after everything you've seen, this is the ultimate shed, isn't it? So I'm bringing this and I'm going to be parking it in the JM on Cars section of Shed Fest. And I'd love to see you. If you want to come along, come and say hi. I tell you what, if you come over, say hi to me, I will give you a Dad Cars window sticker for absolutely nothing. Just come over and say hi. And the final little fun fact I'll leave you with about me and the Mercedes Vitos is I actually sold my lovely white Honda S2000 with red leather interior to fund my first house renovation. You know, when I bought my first house and it needed loads of work doing to it, I sold my S2000 to free up the cash to do so. And that's when I bought the first 2002 Mercedes Vito, you know, to kind of use it to pick up stuff and do tip runs and things as well. And in that first Vito, I stuck a Lamborghini badge on the steering wheel, just as like a bit of motivation for me every single day when I was working evenings, weekends, working on the houses. And over the years and countless tip runs in Mercedes Vitos, I'm actually rather fond of them. In fact, I love them to bits, but I've pretty much finished the renovation on the house that I'm living in now. And because we've got four young children, we can't really move into another complete wreck of a property and do it all again, because you just can't do live-in renovations when you've got four very young children. So, I mean, I guess for the first time, I'm at a stage where I don't really need a veto now. So, you know, should I sell it? I mean, and also just with all my time over the last year being taken up making these videos, I barely use this thing. You know, it's probably less than a thousand miles I've put on it over the last year. I don't know, should I sell it? Would anyone want to buy it? Should I do a little restoration series on it where I try and tackle all of this rust and get my children to help me do it? I don't know, let me know in the comments below. What do you reckon I should do with my Vito? So thank you all so much for watching. Something a bit different this week, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new to the channel and you're still watching now, hi, you should definitely subscribe to the channel. If you're still watching now, subscribe to the channel. I've done loads of cool videos. If you're particularly subscribed to the channel if you're into sports cars, because I've done loads of them testing cars with my children. Here, look, here's a couple here. Maybe check them out. But thank you once again, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.